Centuries ago, Arctic re researchers would intentionally get their ships frozen into the sea ice. They were basically prisoners of the winter. They'd float in exploration of a northwest passage. A ton of them died doing it. It's long been a fascination of mine. I've bored the next team with a number of these stories. Arctic exploration nowadays, it's not as risky, but it's still an adventure. There are CU Boulder researchers who are frozen in the ice for the next year. We told you about the preparations for their trip on Next over the summer. They're designing sleds to use in their Arctic research. The guy in charge of the team, Matt Shoopy, has been out there since September. He can only communicate by radio phone. So our meteorologist Corey Repenhagen gave him a call. Uh, for many weeks now. In the Arctic darkness near the North Pole, the winter ice blows are returning. With it come wind chills at negative 40 degrees. Despite dangerous conditions, a group of scientists from CU Boulder is living on the ice. I think my body's starting to feel the lack of sunlight a little bit, um, but it's just, it's really so amazing up here that I think that it makes up for the lack of sunlight. Matt Shoup is an atmospheric scientist who's joined a project to measure this remote part of the world. Yeah, we basically found an ice flow that we, we think is a good ice flow that is going to last for the, the whole year. These scientists parked their ship called the Polar Stern on the edge of an ice flow and let the ice freeze up around it. Then they built a runway, a helipad, and four science camps all on this giant chunk of floating ice. It's really been great to see this evolve from just an ice flow to now this kind of metropolis of science activity. The goal is to measure the Arctic sea ice, the water below it, and the air above to uncover the relationships they have with each other and how that impacts the rest of the planet. Shoup leads the atmosphere team. One of the biggest challenges his team faces is keeping the weather sensors working in a harshly cold environment. So this is a thing that we think about a lot. We've designed our systems to try to minimize the effect of that. We go out every day and try to clean our instruments and make sure that they're handling the conditions all right. It's the biggest Arctic science project ever conducted. About 100 people live and work on this desolate and dangerous field of ice. The rule is for everyone to return to the ship and check in when the day's work is done. Yeah, we just kind of made the decision early on that we would not have anybody out at remote camps overnight. And, and we're constantly thinking about the safety of people, uh, both you know, in operating in these extreme conditions. Um, there's polar bears around, uh, there are cracks in the ice. The nights will get even darker over the next few months and the days 10 to 20 degrees colder. But the research will press on until the summer sun melts this science city back into the Arctic Ocean. Meteorologist Corey Repenhagen for next. The CU Boulder researchers are there on the ice in shifts. So Matt will come home in December. Another member of his team will take his place.